A story broke recently that France's National Frequency Agency, the country's equivalent of Ofcom, has announced that certain parts of the radio spectrum are going to be used for the 2024 Olympic and Paralympic Games. Plans are in place to use the amateur radio 144 and 430 MHz bands for PMR voice communications, as well as 1.24 GHz for program making and special events, and 2.3 GHz for video links during the event. The National Frequency Agency is in charge of drawing up the frequency plan and allocating frequencies for the games, and it's no mean feat. It takes a lot of careful planning and involves tens of thousands of licenses being issued. Now, this has caused quite a stir on social media, albeit mainly amongst British radio amateurs. Effective wireless communication is essential for the organisation and delivery of an event like the Olympics. Every function uses spectrum intensively and relies on it for critical applications. These examples include wireless cameras and microphones. Broadcasters need to be as close as possible to the action and need wireless links to capture them, for example close-ups of the marathon runners from motorbikes and live coverage from helicopters. Substantial new private mobile radio networks are needed, for example for the stewards managing the road races, the athletic teams and the organisers transport function. Timing and scoring is also another application that uses Spectrum. Following the progress of an event and communicating the final result depends in many cases on wireless links. For example, wireless links allow the location of boats in the sailing events to be tracked and displayed for spectators. Another application is services for the audience such as audio description services for hearing and visually impaired spectators and sports presentation content for the rest of the audience. Satellite uplinks get pictures and sound to billions of people in the worldwide audience. And finally, the mobile network operators delivering their planned coverage and capacity for public mobile services rely on the frequencies they use, remaining clear of interference. So, as you can see, there's a whole multitude of different users using different frequencies that have to be shoehorned alongside each other without causing interference to one another and wider spectrum users. Now, Ofcom, the UK's communications regulator, did exactly this for the London 2012 Olympics on a scale bigger than anything they'd carried out before. Around this time, Ofcom was normally making about 10 to 12,000 technical assignments across the whole of the UK during a one year period. A technical assignment is a bespoke license, different from standard licenses that are granted for specific purposes. Each one of these requires an expert analysis of the user's requirements, the spectrum available to fulfil it, and the interference implications to and from neighbouring frequencies and users. For the 2012 Olympics, in addition to the normal levels of technical assignments, Ofcom made an additional 17,000 specifically for the users involved in the games, whilst also meeting the needs of the thousands of additional Spectrum users in London during the games. Nearly 6,000 licenses were issued to more than 250 organisations, occupying over 1 GHz of Spectrum. 17,000 assignments were within the games venues and 13,000 were for applications outside the games. Many of these assignments were in frequency bands not normally used for program making and special events and a lot of careful technology planning was carried out to determine the parameters in which assignments could be made in these bands. Similarly, France is undertaking the same task. It's worked with all the assignees to assess the amount of spectrum needed for the organisation and global dissemination of the games. In this context, bands not primarily devoted to PMR, PMSE audio and video uses and score and time management have been identified in order to meet the consequent need for spectrum resources. Therefore, the spectrum between 144 and 146 MHz has been authorised for use. The band will accommodate PMR voice services, mainly walkie-talkies, in simplex mode up to 1 watt at 40 sites. In addition, on these sites, the frequencies between 430 and 440 MHz will also be used to accommodate PMR simplex voice services up to 1 watt. 
for London 2012, after Spectrum was assigned to a user, Ofcom responded to any complaints of harmful interference. Back then, it typically had 32 experts available for this task, but for the Olympics, they expanded the team to 120. Now, when I said all this was no mean feat, I meant it. Work started on this in 2005, when London was awarded the Games. The government made two promises. Firstly, that they would ensure that the Spectrum was free and well managed to support such a massive event, and secondly, that they would waive any licence fees related to the unprecedented demand of such a huge portion of Spectrum. On the back of this, Ofcom's tasks fell into four categories. Organising a full Spectrum plan, arranging all the Spectrum licences and the systems needed to deliver the plan, resolving cases of harmful interference, and of course ensuring that its Spectrum activities were able to support the higher volumes of transactions associated with the games. Basically, ensuring everything was business as usual. Reports of interference at the principal games venues were dealt with by eight cluster teams. A cluster team consisted of three venue engineers and a cluster manager. Typically, there were three teams in each cluster to cover shifts. Users suffering interference reported the problem to the Technology Operations Centre, which managed all technology incidents for the games. 177 cases were handled during the Olympics, and 42 during the Paralympics. Most of them were caused either by faulty equipment or poor site engineering by Spectrum users. Now, 83.5 million people watched the London 2012 Games. Can you imagine if a microphone or video feed went down due to interference? Whilst frequencies surrounding the 144 to 145 MHz 2 metre band were used for the London 2012 Olympics, the 2 metre band itself wasn't. However, portions of the 70 centimetre band were used for talkback and telemetry. France intends to use both 2 metres and 70 centimetres for PMR voice services. They also intend to use 1240 to 1260 MHz, which is open to amateur use on a secondary basis, just as Ofcom did in the UK. This will accommodate PMSE audio equipment with a power of less than or equal to 50 milliwatts. Finally, in the bands between 2.3 and 2.483 GHz, part of which is also open to amateur services on a secondary basis, there are plans for mobile video links up to 10 watts. The frequencies will be made available to the organising committee of the 2024 Olympic Games during the period from one month before the opening ceremony of the Olympics to one week after the closing ceremony of the Paralympics, basically the 26th of June to the 15th of September. In order for them to be usable, it's essential that in the vicinity of the Olympic sites, the band's use by radio amateurs is stopped for that period. Now, this is the bit that's caused the stir among some French amateurs, but it seems to have caused more of a stir amongst British amateurs, and it did back in 2012. The RSGB was approached by Ofcom to help determine sections of the 70cm amateur band that needed to be released for the London 2012 Games. As a secondary user of the band, we as radio amateurs have no specific rights to any of these frequencies, Rather than just imposing the changes, Ofcom approached the society in the spirit of cooperation to work together to solve the problem. Ofcom gave clear assurance that the segments used would be returned once the games were over, as France will naturally do as well. Surprisingly, the main reaction seems to have come from UK amateurs. I followed this story on some of the Facebook groups and saw people in the south of the UK who were concerned about interference from France coming over on 2 metres and 70 centimetres. Now, this is very unlikely. The services being used are 1 watt or less, and they're simplex FM in extremely congested and built-up areas. The chances of any of these signals making their way over to the UK are extremely slim. And if they do, well, that's something you're going to have to live with during the Olympics. There was plenty of talk on social media amongst disgruntled amateurs who said they'd turn their 2 metre and 70 centimetre beams towards France and run some high power transmissions to try and disrupt things. There was also talk of using high powered amplifiers down in the south of England to the same effect. 
Now, this whole exercise is about amateurs supporting these events as secondary users of some of these bans. If we don't share, then why should the Ministry of Defence and the Civil Aviation Authority, amongst a few organisations, share with us? And the situation would be a whole lot worse in the future when the bans are withdrawn and used for other services due to lack of use. So that's something for you to think about.